Engineering societies and associations are uniquely positioned to advance the SDGs. The first part of this session will introduce how key organizations and institutions are playing a role in the 2030 agenda, contributing to sustainability broadly and envisioning the future. I'm pleased to introduce you to our co-architect for the session, Mark Abbott. Mark is the Managing Director of the Engineering Change Lab Canada, which is a catalyst for evolving the engineering community to reach its full potential as stewards of technology for the benefit of all. Previously, Mark served as a member of the executive team at Engineers Without Borders Canada for several years. And before that, Mark spent 14 years working for a heavy industrial consulting engineering firm based in Vancouver. Thank you for joining us from British Columbia today, Mark. Over to you. Thanks, Jana. Um, uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Mark Abbott. I'm, as Jana said, the managing director of the Engineering Change Lab here in Canada. Uh, the Engineering Change Lab is a collaborative platform that brings together leaders from across the engineering community uh, to help understand and unlock the full potential of engineering to contribute to society. So it was my pleasure to be asked to moderate today's panel. And we'll be considering, as Jana said, the opportunity for engineering societies to help drive sustainable development. And we already heard a lot in the opening session about the SDGs and their importance, and the importance of, the, in particular, of the contributions of engineering and technology. But just as a quick reminder, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals frame an urgent call for action by all countries to work together in global partnership. The SDGs are the latest in an arc of multinational efforts. They build on the Rio Plus 20 conference where member states discussed the future we want. Since helping build the future we want sounds like a good way of summarizing the ultimate goal of the engineering profession, and since the SDGs represent the broadest and most legitimate international consensus on what that future needs to look like, we thought now would be a great time to do a bit of benchmarking regarding how key organizations are currently contributing to sustainability broadly and the SDGs specifically. With the help of several Eclipse interns from the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, we develop, developed an initial list of benchmarking questions that we used to engage several engineering societies in a first round of exploration. We see this as early experimentation around what an ongoing process for benchmarking could look like. Today, we're excited to bring you into this conversation by having a discussion with three of the leading engineering societies that we've engaged in the exercise thus far. We have amazing panelists representing the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or ASME, the American Society of Civil Engineers, or ASCE, and the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineers, or IEEE. I will provide a brief into, intro to each of our panelists before I ask them their first question. Once again, we aren't gonna have time for a direct Q&A in this panel. However, if you type your comments and questions for the panelists into the chat, we will share them with the panelists afterwards, get their responses, and incorporate them into the final synthesis document for the conference. So without further ado, let's get to the panelists. We're going to hear from them in two main rounds of, of conversation. The first looking at the current state of their engineering society's contribution to sustainable development, and the second looking ahead to the future. Our first panelist is Bill Kelly, who is representing the American Society of Civil Engineers. Bill currently chairs the ASCE Working Group for Global Sustainability, and he has taught sustainability at George Mason University. Just this fall, he was recognized for his work on advancing the UN SDGs with an ASCE Distinguished Service Medal. Bill, I know that ASCE has been formally committed to sustainable development since the mid 90s, when sustainability was first explicitly incorporated into your code of ethics. And I also know that ASCE has a formal policy explicitly endorsing the UN Sustainable Development Goals. With this long history of contribution, can you give an overview of how ASCE views the potential of engineers to contribute to sustainability, sustainable development and what ASCE is currently doing to support this contribution? Happy to do that, Mark. Um, I want to mention first that the ASC Code of Ethics was actually updated this fall, and sustainability is even more prominent in the new version than it was in the old version. Uh, one of the fundamental principles being that engineers create safe, resilient, and sustainable infrastructure. And then with a responsibility um, that includes adherence to the principles of sustainable development. It also calls again for zero tolerance for bribery and corruption. And that aligns very nicely with UN SDG 16. Uh, and the reality is in many parts of the world, uh, corruption and bribery are the biggest barriers to sustainable infrastructure. 
I want to talk about four actions that ASCE is taking uh, right now, and I'll start with policy 418. You mentioned the policy on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, policy 418 is the role of civil engineers in sustainable development. And it, it briefly says that civil engineers shall be committed to the following ASC principles of sustainable development. The first is to do the right project. And this means that engineers need to be involved much earlier in the, uh, in the project development phase than they have in the past. And then the second is to do the project right. And this policy has actually been around since 1993. So we're coming up on 30 years uh, where ASCE has been doing it. Mark, you mentioned the 1992 uh, conference. Um, the second one is the ASCE five-year roadmap to sustainable development. And there are four pillars. The first pillar is to do the right project, which I mentioned just briefly as one of the principles. And the second is to do the project right. And where ASCE is right now is, uh, is with a, a new standard, the standard requirements for sustainable infrastructure. And this is gonna be a true engineering standard. This is being developed in the ANSI process. And I know ASME is very knowledgeable on standards development. Uh, it's expected to be ready finally uh, in 2021. One of the challenges with the standards procedures is it's a long-term process. The third, third pillar of the roadmap or third signpost, if you want, is to build capacity. Uh, and, and this uh, starts obviously with formal education that you mentioned earlier in the introduction, and then uh, continuing education, lifelong learning, uh, making sure the practitioners have the tools. And the tools are evolving rapidly. I looked at just re this, uh, this week, there's like 50 sustainable infrastructure tools that are out there. Uh, the book um, that I had the uh, privilege of, uh, of co-editing uh, has a, a general discussion of sustainability, also has an introduction to the sustainable development goals. And then ASE has done uh, a series of webinars, uh, one directed specifically at students and one at practitioners, on the sustainable development goals, uh, how, uh, how ASC members can get involved. The fourth pillar is we need to transform the, the profession. We need to have, just as we're hearing today, engineers think when they're gonna do something, think how does it fit with the framework of the SDGs? And then we need to make sure in our case uh, that the public demands infrastructure that's sustainable and resilient. If the public doesn't demand it, we're not going to be able to make it happen. If the public demands it, we're going, to, we're, we're going to be forced to make it happen. The third pillar is the international conferences on sustainable infrastructure that, uh, that are practice-oriented conferences, and they run uh, every two years. The next one will be in 2021. And the final uh, pillar is the industry-led international coalition for sustainable infrastructure that you mentioned earlier. This is a new activity, came out of the 2019 ICSI conference in LA. So Mark, with that, I'll turn it back to you. Great. Uh, thanks, Bill. It's, it's great to hear that, um, that update and overview on ASE's efforts. And I, I really love the, um, you know, it's not just about doing the project right, but doing the right project. And this idea of kind of advocating more with the general public, I think really speak to this, you know, an expanded view of, of the contribution of engineers. Um, next, we have Michael Johnson, who's the Chief Strategy Officer at the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Um, Michael, from our pre-research and conversation, I know that um, ASME has also um, been for over a decade directly um, involved and, and uh, contributing towards sustainable development and the UN SDGs more explicitly, um, including launching and supporting, um, helping launch and support Engineering for Change, the organization that, um, that uh, puts on this conference. So the same question to you, with your organization's long history of effort in this area, can you give us an overview of how ASME views the potential of engineers to contribute and what you're currently doing to support this contribution? Well, thanks, Mark, and, and thank you for having me. Uh, we, Yes, as you mentioned, we have been engaged in this for uh, several years. We support a number of the SDGs uh, through the activities. Uh, we, we just fundamentally believe that the engineering and particularly the mechanical engineering community uh, has the capability to really deliver on making substantive change uh, to uh, the, our, our planet and what we're particularly doing. Uh, 
I've been here about a year, and when I came in to think about our strategy, I, we really refocused our strategy overall. Uh, if they yeah, so you mean to really focus on the global challenges. There's, we've identified uh, about six or seven things that we really thought we could devote and, and really channel all our energy of the resources we have into these seven goals, which are sustainable solutions, clean energy, efficient housing, clean water, efficient transportation, public safety, and healthy, healthy health care. So we've evolved from primarily the work we historically have done has been done by our philanthropic and our engineering global development sector. But we've uplifted that work to really have the whole organizations focused around these global aspirations. And we're trying to make sure that everything we do has makes a contribution to that. And one of the challenges that we have, one of the challenges we're trying to address is how do we take our 100,000 membership, use that collective knowledge and that collective skill set to drive some of the fundamental changes uh, that we need to have uh, in society. Excellent. Thank, thanks, Michael. That's uh, it's super inspiring to hear sort of this this refocus on on global or or deepening focus on on global challenges and the the sort of sophistication of finding those six or seven specific areas where where you feel like you have the greatest impact and the idea of of the sort of expansion from thinking of it as sort of on the philanthropic side to like uplifting the whole organization I think is uh, very inspiring. Um, to complete our first round, we have Kathy Land, who is the president-elect of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Uh, Kathy, although I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm also an IEEE member. I was attracted by the amazing work IEEE is doing with your ethically aligned design initiative, but I've also come to appreciate just how vast IEEE's efforts are on a wide mm. range of efforts to connect engineering to purpose. With everything that the IEEE is doing, can you give us an overview of how you see sustainable development and how you are integrating it into your overall efforts? Um, yes, well, thank you, Mark. And um, thank you for your IEEE membership. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, so um, innovative implementation of existing and emerging technologies is one of the essentials of achieving sustainable development worldwide. Um, the SDGs are all encompassing and IEEE recognizes that it will have its greatest impact in the areas where SDGs align with IEEE's core competencies. Um, IEEE members around the globe are continuously exploring and applying technology to help solve the world's most challenging problems. And it's that universal passion to use technology to improve global conditions, which is really at the heart of IEEE's significant humanitarian activities and our expanding partnerships in the realm of sustainable development. There's a lot of excitement around information and communications technologies or ICTs and other innovations as valuable tools for achieving so many of the UN SDGs, including offsetting poverty and hunger and promoting clean water and sanitation, climate action, affordable and clean energy, human well-being, economic growth, and responsible consumption and production, for example. With more than 419,000 members in over 160 countries, IEEE is a leading authority in ICTs and virtually every other technology area in touching sustainable development, such as smart cities, transportation, and all aspects of power and energy from generation to efficient consumption. Um, in, in recent years, um, IEEE has placed greater emphasis on human technical activities, um, in hu humanitarian technical activities. Um, IEEE works across multiple fronts to advance sustainable development, ensure that we are succeeding in our mission to advance technology for the benefit of humanity. For example, the IEEE Humanitarian Activities Committee, or HAC, was launched in 2016 as a committee of the IEEE uh, reporting directly to the board of directors. HAC provides a suite of resources that inspire and enable IEEE volunteers around the world to carry out and support impactful humanitarian technology and sustainable development activities at the local level. HAC focuses on raising awareness of how technically trained people can contribute by providing training for engagement in humanitarian technology and sustainable development activities, financially and technically supporting and evaluating projects, 
cultivating relationships and opportunities so that IEEE can become a leader in global sustainable development community. The IEEE Smart Village is another IEEE initiative that encourages development in energy impoverished communities around the world. Smart Village provides technical and financial support to local entrepreneurs uh, who expand both energy access and education in remote communities. The program combines the talents of empowered beneficiaries with IEEE volunteers, but uh, playing an active role in doing hands-on work in local communities. Um, the work that Smart Village is doing around the world is really impressive. There's another activity, um, the IEEE Global Initiative on Ethics of Autonomous and Intelligent Systems. Um, and that's the project you mentioned, Mark. Uh, it, it, this works to ensure that every stakeholder involved in the design and development of autonomous and intelligent systems is educated, trained, and empowered to prioritize the ethical considerations so that these technologies are advanced for the benefit of humanity. And then the IEEE P7000 series of standards projects that are under development represents a unique addition to the collection of over 1900 global IEEE standards and projects. Um, whereas the more tr traditional standards um, have a focus on technology, interoperability, functionality, safety, and trade facilitation, the IEEE P7000 series addresses specific issues at the intersection of technological and ethical considerations, like its technical standards uh, counterparts, the IEEE P7000 series empowers innovation across borders and enables societal benefit. So we're pretty busy um, in, the, in this area um, and there's a lot going on in IEEE, thanks. Wow, yeah, a lot, a lot going on to say the least. And um, I'm really loving this theme I'm hearing from all of you of sort of, uh, looking at, at sustainable development and the SDGs and also um, putting that up against sort of the unique opportunities for your particular societies to contribute. And uh, Kathy, I loved what you said about, um, you know, with the long history of IEEE's uh, strength in, in technical standards, this move towards, you know, the, the more the integrating the ethical standards and the technical standards, I think is, is really exciting. Um, so moving into our next round where we want to now um, look ahead a little bit, uh, Bill, you mentioned in your first response that um, uh, you know ASEE recently strengthened sustainability in your code of ethics, uh, and I know you're already doing a lot. So I'm curious about how you envision ramping up your efforts um, in alignment with the stronger commitment. Um, so going forward, what do you see as as the next opportunities and barriers for ASEE um, specifically, and for en and engineering more broadly to contribute to sustainable development? Uh, Mark, I, I think. The uh, immediate opportunity for ASCE is really to build on the standard that I mentioned uh, earlier, the standard requirement for sustainable infrastructure. There's a real need for this uh, nationally and internationally. Um, and, and that's gonna be a heavy lift to make sure that that gets out and the appropriate support. Um, this, the second uh, area is real, really collaboration or as Jana pointed out and several have said earlier on, it's partnerships. And ASC collaborates with uh, the other civil engineering societies, the Institute of Civil Engineers in the UK, the Canadian Society of Civil Engineers. And as I mentioned earlier, the Asian Civil Engineering Coordinating Council, which is about 20 civil engineering societies. We also work very closely with the World Federation of Engineering Organizations. And WFEO is, is uh, uh, WFEO and the Institute of uh, the uh, International Science Council co-organized uh, co co the uh, major group on science and technology at the UN. Uh, it's important then also to work with the UN agencies. ECOSOC has been on UNOPS and UNEP. And UNOPS and UNEP are actually doing important work on sustainable infrastructure. I organized a seminar uh, a week or two ago with my Asian Civil Engineering Coordinating Council on planning. We had Rowan Palmer uh, from... Uh, uh, UNAP uh, talk on planning. Uh, and then uh, it's important that we make the stronger connection with, uh, with industry. And I mentioned ICSI, uh, the International Science, uh, uh, International uh, Coalition for Sustainable Infrastructure. I also believe uh, for the UN that there's a special opportunity this year. The president of ECOSOC, who kind of sets the agenda for the high level political forum, He's identified three priorities. The first one is finance. 
The second one is sustainable infrastructure. And the third is science, technology, and innovation. And he's looking for very specific things that could be done to accelerate progress over the next decade. And then I think we need to renew our efforts to make sure that all our civil engineering graduates have the knowledge they need on the sustainable development goals. For engineering more broadly, I think collaboration is, is the key. Partnerships, we've got to, we've got to uh, tear down some silos and work together. Uh, I think we can have an enormous impact on engineering education more broadly. It's not just the civil engineers that need to know about the SDGs. All engineers need to know about the SDGs. And then, unfortunately, today, we lack a formal or even an informal way of sharing best practice among the engineering societies and the other engineering organizations like Engineers Without Borders. Uh, if we're going to make an impact uh, nationally and, and internationally on the STGs, we need to work together. Otherwise, the voice of engineering is, is kind of lost in the crowd. I can tell you that's very true at, at the UN. I think if we can find some ways to work together, and I give Engineering for Change a lot of credit for what they're trying to do here, if they can change the way we're collaborating, I think the engineering community can really have an impact on the STGs. So I'll turn it back to you, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. I love that um, uh, that focus on collaboration with NASE and hearing it from um, from ASME and IEEE as well, too. Obviously, very well aligned with the SDGs and in particular Goal 17, which is all about uh, collaboration around the goals. Um, Michael, over to you. And your your first response, uh, you know, you 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 spoke about um, you know that uh, that potential to connect your, the hundred thousand ASME members even more to this work and thread it through everything um, everything that you're doing. Uh, going forward, what do you see as, as next opportunities and barriers for ASME specifically and engineering more broadly um, in this front? I, I, I really just want to amplify a little bit what Bill said. I, I think that we've got to do uh, a much better job of collaboration. We've got to figure out how IEEE, the civils, the mechanical engineers, and particularly as engineering is changing, uh, particularly relative to becoming a much more multidisciplinary activity, that we we come together in some kind of form, which is which is one of these that we're trying to do here today, and really start to drive collaboration across uh, all of our societies. And so I think that's a huge opportunity for us that we've got to take a little bit more advantage of. Uh, specifically related to ASME, uh, we will continue to do uh, and expand our innovation showcase, our iShow, that gives young entrepreneurs, college entrepreneurs, an opportunity to, be, to do some hardware software development activities uh, in social spaces. So we'll continue to force sponsor that. <clears throat> we'll continue to sponsor our fellowship programs and expand our fellowship programs to make sure that we're building a talent pool uh, going forward relative to this. And, and probably most importantly, as some of you know, recently we formed a, a for-profit arm of ASME. And the whole design there is to generate alternative revenue streams that we can use to fund some of the philanthropic work that we're currently doing. The reality is, is that, you know, whether we like it or not, these programs require enormous sums of money. Uh, we've got to figure out how we can make a bigger investment here and so one of our strategic pillars is to drive some commercial business so that we can fund more of this work activity going forward. And then I think relative to um, engaging our engineering community, uh, as I said, we, we've just now established a strategy. We're trying to drive that strategic direction down through the organization, working through our technology sector. And so I think as time evolves, uh, we'll see more and more of that, that 100,000 group of people being focused on social development. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, you know, again, continuing on this theme of, of, of collaboration and, and the work and efforts going to be required to put it in to, to uh, make sure that we are collaborating across different organizations. And then I think that recognition of the, um, of the financing needs to make the, our efforts on sustainability financially sustainable as well, I think, is, is an excellent point. Um, Kathy, uh, you gave a great overview of in your first um, response on the many efforts IEEE already has underway, and I know it's uh, there's just so much going on within I IEEE. Um, within all of that, what are you seeing as the next opportunities and barriers for IEEE uh, going forward? Um, thanks. 
Yeah. So IEEE has a call to action to its communities to develop professional and educational programs supporting capacity building for engineering and technical professionals in parts of the world where resources are scanned. Um, we see it as an issue of capacity. Many IEEE programs are focused on building partnerships with local communities and stakeholder groups to encourage the adaption and implementation of appropriate technology to increase community capacity, building to support local sustainability. Our efforts are focused on strengthening the capacity and impact of IEEE volunteers involved in sustainable development activities by um, raising awareness of how technologists and scientists and engineers can contribute, facilitating different levels of education and training, providing funding for projects and events across the globe, uh, supporting multi-stakeholder collaboration through IEEE activities and building strategic partnerships to better leverage opportunities. Um, in addition, IEEE recently received consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council or ECOSOC, and, and this special status is granted to non-governmental organizations um, or NGOs which have special competence and are concerned specifically with some fields of activity uh, covered by um, ECOSOC. So this approval recognizes IEEE's contribution to date to sustainable development and humanitarian technology and to supporting the achievement of the UN SDGs. So this status enables IEEE to more closely participate in the work of the uh, United Nations and to attend international conferences and events, make written, oral, written and oral statements at these events and organize side events, uh, enter the UN premises and have opportunities to network and lobby. So this will also allow uh, IEEE to strategically uh, uh, significant help us increase uh, our impact and contributions going forward. That's something that we felt like we've been limited in some way. So uh, IEEE is also engaged uh, with the International Telecommunication Union or ITU, which is the United Nations Agency for Digital Technology. So um, we're just trying to increase our, our inroads. Um, as for barriers, <clears throat> it's true that new environmental, ethical and equity related challenges are being introduced by some of our world's most promising transformative technologies that threaten to undermine trust and hinder advances in sustainable development. Um, ICTs, for example, may contribute to increased levels of emissions in terms of uh, their production, energy consumption, and associated electronic waste. They also raise new requirements around the issues of systemic risk, uh, diminished trust, privacy challenges, and issues of data transparency. Um, ownership and agency. So developers and operators of ICTs uh, must maintain awareness and employ consensus-based uh, technical practices and standards, recognizing and aligning with end users and citizens' values. So th those are some issues. So we're working um, to create a plan to develop IEEE's future engagement in creating and supporting technical solutions, particularly in areas of sustainable energy and ICT. There's a need uh, for the development of alternative um, and prospective energy system architectures, technologies, and case studies <clears throat> that demonstrate the potential for new approaches to power and energy that can help chart the path uh, toward net zero greenhouse gas futures. Um, as for a sustainable ICT, we recognize the need for advancing human-centric secure, trusted, and ethically oriented ICT that will enhance and sustain human societies over the long term. Um, across the, our organization and our membership, the IEEE Code of Ethics encourages our members to strive and comply with ethical design and sustainable practices. And we have a recent push um, to make sure that um, our members, are, uh, increased member awareness of our Code of Ethics um, and this is crucial given uh, the global scale of the environmental, social, and governance challenges that threaten to influence the living conditions for our current generations. So there's uh, just a few. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. That's amazing. I really love um, what you're saying about sort of recognizing not just the potential of engineering and technology, but also, um, you know, some of the risks that we need to mitigate against. And this idea of 
you know, consensus based approaches where, you know, engineers are, are collaborating broadly in society to, to understand and mitigate those risks, I think, um, I think speaks really well to, you know, it's not just about the goals, it's about how we, how we progress towards those goals too. That's very inspiring. So, um, you know, in the short amount of time, uh, it was, it was great to hear from each of you a little bit about, um, you know, where you're at and looking ahead, you know, we heard, um, about a wide range of sort of activities in all three organizations from codes of ethics to standards, capacity building, providing resources, you know, advocacy, um, collaborating and setting up collaborative platforms. How do we finance all of this work and more? So it's, it's truly inspiring just to see the, um, the scope of engagement that's, uh, that's already happening on all of this work. Um, so I, I'd like to thank all of our panelists for the insights they shared um, with us today. And as I mentioned in the introduction, and as came up in the discussion, um, you know, we view today's conversation and the lead up to it as early steps in an ongoing effort to enhance um, benchmarking and sharing best practices and collaborating across the engineering societies and beyond so that we can continue to enhance engineering's contribution to achieving sustainable development. So this idea of um, in the lead up to this session of, of testing some benchmarking questions and having deeper conversations to sort of cross check and learn across organizations is something that we're, uh, we're really hoping to, con to continue. If you have suggestions um, or are interested in getting involved, we invite you to follow up um, through the engineering society you're currently affiliated with. If you're not affiliated with one or multiple, uh, I encourage you to check out their websites uh, and consider membership um, as I have with ASME and IEEE and I need to look at ASCE now next. Um, and, to, and or to reach out to engineering for change as well. So. Um, with that, I'd like to, uh, to thank again our panelists and, um, and wish everyone uh, uh, enjoyment for the rest of the conference. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Mark, Kathy, Michael, and Bill for your incredible insights. Really excited to digest all of those nuggets.